And to add on to your theory too, and this goes back to the whole topic of why men, particularly black men, like in leadership or in a work environment. So growing up in that household, mm -hmm. it was survival mode. Like we didn't have the opportunity to feel. All right, man, let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. So, LaDonna, you had a you had a question you and I talked about um, yesterday, and then we've, we've been texting back and forth about, you know, this subject. So I want to switch the camera to you so you can go ahead and chime in here, all right? You are funny. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my question, and um, I guess it's not more so of a question, it's more like my thoughts and concerns that I have of why mm -hmm. um, majority of black men have a hard time um, being vulnerable, like going mm -hmm. to, like in a work, workspace, like mm -hmm. with your executive leaders or in your right. HR department, talking about what you have going on in the workplace and what could be bothering you or whatever. Like, what is it? What needs to be created for you all to feel like that's a safe safe space for me to be in? Because mm. I feel like y'all don't think y'all have that, so y'all keep it in. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think, um, you got some, bro? Wait, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> be putting the camera on you. Put it on you. <laughs> so I had my re review recently. Uh -huh. And uh, like our annual review, mm -hmm. and uh, is that with a female or a male? Female. Okay. Female. So my my leader is a female. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, she told me that I need to build deeper relationships. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. And the reason she said, and she's you know she's analyzing me or whatever. I like it. She says the reason why she said I think the reason why you don't build deeper relationships is not because you don't want to. But you're not vulnerable. Oh, so. And why is that? Like, um, why do you feel like? I mean, that's gonna be you being transparent, and yeah. I don't know if you want to be that here. I'm, but I'm, yeah. I got, I got a question before we hit on that. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Let me turn the camera on me. How do you feel about having a female leader? Mm -hmm. I love having a female leader. Either why? Yeah, I love. I mean, I think. I've had a male, I have mean, had all kinds of lead, leaders, right? But I think having a female leader, because I'm so strong or like um, direct, mm -hmm. a female leader helps me balance out like, I hate to say like unnecessary conversations, but like the emotions of everything. Because um, I make business decisions. Mm -hmm. I don't make emotional oh, or like- wow. Or logical. Not, yeah, like, 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 so like, not, it's not saying that female leaders are emotional because they're right. not, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what they have a viewpoint mm -hmm. of how somebody is feeling. In that, they're more in, in that moment. They're more yeah. in tone. So because it's yeah. like we can teach you how it can always, not about what you're saying, it's all right. about your delivering your approach. Right. Right. right, So let me show you how to navigate that so they don't feel some type of way right. about mm -hmm. you being their executive leader. Yep. So with that, it goes back to that question for you to be more open with your your direct reports. Yeah. So I, I asked that question because we have. I mean, it's a lot of men out here, you know, who struggle with women and authority. Mm -hmm. You know, particularly like I mean, think about the, even the election. You know, and I'm gonna be real. I kind of struggle with some of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, and and it's not it's not. Um, a downplay on women, like in my in my case, more so. Um, maybe maybe some brokenness there, mm -hmm. you know. Maybe because um, uh, my my dad was in my life, but I was a, in a broken home, mm -hmm. so it was mostly my mom. You know what I mean. So I think I might feel some way because I I came from that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And I I saw I saw the barrier that she carried. You know. Um, you know, raising me, working two jobs, stuff like that. So did that, so with that, she didn't, I'm not saying that she didn't, but just to ask her, was there a safe space for you to be open about your feelings with your uh, mom? So how did, what did you do with that? No, nah, so that's the thing. It, it wasn't because her carrying the burden, right? It caused, um, 
her to be more uh, emotion emotionally heightened mm-hmm. and sometimes intense on edge on edge mm-hmm. and and kind of lash out mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and he, he, here's the thing no you know no disrespect to my mom or my dad right it was young when they had me mm-hmm. man 18 and 21 like i wouldn't know what to do with a kid 18 and 21 mm-hmm. but um she was she was she was really intense you know and i think too you know when you i can't speak for a woman but i feel like when a woman is carrying all of that Mm -hmm. there is some resentment towards a man Mm -hmm. and then when you're raising a man you kind of feel that you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it leaves some residue feelings Mm -hmm. there you know what i mean and 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 some 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 brokenness no i'm gonna stop using trauma too i'm gonna stop using that just just motion emotions that was unattended you know Mm -hmm. that i may have had or have mm-hmm. you feel me so when we when we talk about now a female leader you know some of those things kind of you know come back up so now that we're older mm-hmm. how do we how do black men reclaim that space i don't know i think we had an example mm-hmm. um you, you just sent me something mm-hmm. yeah you want to talk about that Obama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the space that he created for young black men or men in general to ask the question, what is the resistance there right. to um, not vote for Kamala? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Even uh, this is from, um, I think this is from uh, Global News. Mm-hmm. And the headline reads, Obama criticizes black. Why they put it like that? <laughs> but I don't, see, the, I don't know why that would it. It's like that because the one that I said it was like Obama calls out black men for for hesitance with Harris. Wow, you're thinking about sitting out, and yeah. why is that? I I don't think see Obama criticizes black men who aren't supporting Harris. Not acceptable. I don't even think it's criticizing. I see, and here's the thing: like people like me mm-hmm. need to see this, mm-hmm. and I don't see it as criticizing. I see it as him being an example of what a man a leader truly is that what it looks like to open up about your feeling right. about your community You're, man to man right right man mm-hmm. to man like yo it's okay you yeah. know let your guards down and mostly we just we got our guards up yeah you feel me again going back to me being raised by my mom and mm-hmm. you know again my dad was there not saying he was he wasn't but you know that's interesting why do you have your guard up when you was yeah, just well, we, we gonna get into I, it. Yeah, we gonna I, got, get into I got a, I got a theory. Yeah, we play it. I got a theory. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's get into it. Here, 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 here this is my president, mm. Barack. My president. Uh, okay, <laughs> he, he mine too. <laughs> Barack Obama. Let's get into it. Just say some, speak some truths if you don't mind, please. Because my understanding, based on reports I'm getting from campaigns and communities is that um, we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was wrong. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly. Please do. And say that when you have a choice that is this clear, when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. Who's had to work harder and do more and overcome and achieves the second highest office in the land and is putting forward concrete proposals to directly address the things that are vital 
in our neighborhoods and our communities, from housing to making sure that our, our, our mothers and our, our fathers and our grandparents can afford medicine, and, and making sure that we are dealing with prices that are too high and rents that are too high, and, and are committed to is committed to making sure that we maintain the Affordable Care Act so everybody's got help here and cares about things like education and entrepreneurship in our neighborhoods. And that's on one side. And on the other side, you have someone who has consistently shown disregard, not just for the communities, but for you as a person. And you're thinking about sitting out? <laughs> but, you know, Cousin Pookie might be. Might be. Not Pookie. And you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that. Because, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, Ooh. part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Let's talk about it. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. And so now, you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength because that's what being a man is, putting women down. That's not acceptable. That's not it. This shouldn't even be a question. Mm. Wow. Wow. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. The fact that he was able to, like, just communicate that message as clearly. My bad, y'all. As he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, we talk about vulnerability, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's special. The way that he communicated that message. Mm -hmm. Whether you whether you agree with it or not, mm -hmm. right? Like, he came into, I don't look like, like he was at some type of rally or campaign headquarters or something. Mm -hmm. And like he's in a room of people that he's talking about, right? <laughs> so it's like, because uh, uh, you know, how many people would be? Let's be real, right? How many people would be scared to like go into a room, right? Of the people that you're talking about, mm -hmm. and be as direct and like, I got something in my chest. Y'all finna hear this? Wow, mm -hmm. wow. You know and I think it was good that he did it because it's also a lot of the a lot of black men do not have that male figure in the household to talk to right. them about right. those issues that he were, he was bringing up. Like, I agree with him. I find that a lot of men find excuses on why they don't want to vote for her mm -hmm. because it's, she's a woman. Right. And so I'm, a, I'm not going to vote for her, but I'm not going to vote for him. So I'll probably just sit out. And just like he said, that is like, you think that's a sign of strength? No. Like, that's what a lot of uh, black men do, right. even in the workplace and at home. Right. If I don't say anything, then that lets me know we ain't got to talk about it, and I'm not going to talk about it, and I'm a man about this. Right. So I'm going to just sit and be quiet mm -hmm. when that's not you opening up. That's strength. Right. Yeah. I think uh, you said you had a uh, uh, um, you had a uh, conclude, not a conclusion. But you had some. You did you lose it? Um, you no, no, I, I wrote it down. Okay, <laughs> but uh, well, before I say that, I will say also, mm. uh, this is where this is maybe this is why this is kind of plays into the vulnerability piece too, mm. right? Because it kind of like it's like the trust piece of like Obama's a politician, right? So like he's supposed to say that as well. But he's supposed to say because like he he's try like his 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 goal is to get votes. Mm -hmm. That's his goal, right? So. And I'm gonna. And I'm not saying he's wrong mm -hmm. by any means, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I think I agree with him probably more than more than I disagree, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also it's his job is to right. sell us on right going out and voting for this person as well. I get that it, it's his job, 
I understand that. But also the problem that we're having right now is mm. that black men are sitting out because it's her. Mm. Like he said, y'all wasn't feeling this way when I was running. Right. Y'all right. had the energy and ready to go vote, standing out on the street, selling shirts, doing all this. Where is that energy for her? Mm -hmm. Right. So to your point, you are a salesman too. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But would I not buy a car from you because you're a salesman? Right. You know what I mean? Right. It, it's the that's person. Gotta, that's what you got to move past, though, is like, okay, is it like it's, it's the person you are. Sell. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. All sell, we sell, like, right now we're selling people to listen to us right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just the reality. That's, that's what it But was. the reason I will buy from you is because I know you're passionate about what you do. You yeah. see what I'm saying? That's how I feel about Barack. Like, that's why he got my vote. I think he was the first president I was ever, ever able to get to vote. Oh, yeah. And, that, man, that, like, that set precedence for me. Like, after that, I'm like, bro, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Cause, so not, not just playing. Just playing. Uh -huh. <laughs> nah, I ain't saying that now, but I'm just saying, I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't even know, bro, because he, he said the president's like, yeah. he was so compassionate. You know, he was so passionate about what he do, yeah. you know, or whatever. But um, here's my theory. Yeah, go ahead. Here's my theory. Mm -hmm. I got a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess in general, but more specifically, black households, mm -hmm. what's the divorce rate? Or the broken family rate, or like how know. many people are actually together? I don't know. It's probably pretty low. I'm gonna say low, but like it ain't high. That the people are together, the, the, not together. like naturally, the divorce rate is what fifty percent, fifty one, fifty one percent. Yeah. And it's probably low. It's probably higher in the black in community. our community. Yeah, we probably the majority, probably. right? Yeah. So when you think about it, and some of the things, that you unless you're Caribbean, that's. But anyway, go ahead. Never mind. <laughs> Caribbean, they different. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, opportunities. <laughs> um, but uh, it, so you think about it from that perspective. Uh -huh. When you when you think you talked about your experience, right? And it's kind of like that trauma or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. More men mm -hmm. were raised in single family homes, for real, or not single, not just single family, single mothers, mm -hmm. and they have some type of whatever woman in leadership issues from their right. childhood yeah so i really think that's the reason why because i don't feel that way like i because I, 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 because you had a balance yeah like like I, like my parents were together until like what fifth grade mm -hmm. and then i probably was with my mom for like a year right and then i was with my dad right mm -hmm. so i don't i don't have an issue with like female leadership but i i do understand though like some men do have a le issue right leadership, uh, issue with with uh female leadership and it could be because of the household, household of how they grew up, right? So I think you got to, I think y'all, you know, you have a point there. And to and to add on to your theory too, and this goes back to the whole topic of why men, particularly black men, like in leadership or in a work environment. So growing up in that household, mm -hmm. it was survival mode. Like we didn't have the opportunity to feel, mm -hmm. we couldn't feel. You know what I mean? So is that the reason why with some? Because like I had the conversation with the person that I'm dating, right? Uh -huh. And I and I told him, I said, I see the difference between me and you. One, I can tell I was raised off love. Not saying that your mom or your right. dad didn't love you, but you was raised off survival. Yeah. And I could see that in the way you right. so, or whatever. But think about think about this. So you create a safe space though to talk about. Wow, well, see that uh, that's gonna be a practice. It's something I don't I don't think it's something we can jump into. I think it's something that have, even myself, you know what I mean? Like being vulnerable is really difficult mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I, it's something I have to practice. So what do you need? That that That's more of well, a woman perspective. And I'm looking and listening to you all, right? What I'm I need? like, what is it that you need where you're able to, what does that space look like? Well, I think that it determines based upon the man the the man because different men deal with things differently you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah it's it's too convoluted like i'm like the answer is too convoluted from a personal perspective uh -huh. but from a business or leadership perspective mm -hmm. it's clear okay so if your executive leader is modeling that for you how are you going to take that and model it for and that's the that's the and that's the key right because 
regardless of what trauma, what experience you've 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 dealt with, mm-hmm. it's your responsibility in that organization. Mm-hmm. If you're that leader, it's your responsibility to create that openness and create that safe space, that open door for people to you know feel comfortable enough to to. to how you gonna do it if you don't know how to? That's what I was gonna ask. How you gonna do it if you don't know how to? It, it, see, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. If, so if you yeah. don't know how, so that's why it always stem from. You gotta you gotta have you gotta you gotta have somebody like like a, like Obama came in. And you, you talked about his his leadership. Yeah, right? yeah. You have to have somebody to like open your eyes to. Oh shoot! Like right. Because so, like, and it's also is like, what is what is vulner- vulnerability? Mm-hmm. It's different for like mm-hmm. you can tell somebody. I don't know that you and your wife had an argument last night, mm-hmm. and they wouldn't necessarily consider it as vulnerable as saying, um, I don't know, I, my kid had a football game. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it's a different. Right. Like depending on the person mm-hmm. that you're mm-hmm. leading. It you know it it varies on what on how vulnerable you know you need to you know so it's based off of the, like it is it is situation right but as a leader but what's clear though is as a leader mm-hmm. you have to be that vulnerable person to be able to like hey you know what I understand what you're going through yeah this is what I experienced in my life right that kind of relates to it it's not maybe not be the exact thing right but this is what you know and this is how I got over that it's how I overcame that right so I guess in that case we're talking to leaders. Yeah, one thousand percent. Yeah, so black men in leadership role or a leader role. If you call yourself a leader, right? You point at him. Oh, wait, what was that? that? That's what. Oh. <laughs> like if it looked like she flicked something at you, and you just <laughs> moving anyway. out the way. <laughs> Boogers over. Here. Yeah, but I was so okay. So if that is the case, uh, why is it that black men? Do not say those type of things in the workplace. Like with female executive leaders, someone come to me, mm-hmm. I can say like, I understand what you're going through and I can help you m- maneuver through that. Mm-hmm. And I've been through that before. And this right. is how I handle it. Where men, you're you're just looking for the solution for them right quick. Mm-hmm. You're not right. getting ready. It's like, you know what? I did go through that same thing and it had me down and it had me out and I was probably depressed. I do that. Blah, 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 blah. In the workplace? Yeah. Yeah, I do that. In the workplace? Yeah. Really? But I'm I'm I feel like I'm more in touch with my emotions. Mm-hmm. So I so if I'm speaking to leaders, I think mm-hmm. it comes it comes to being more self aware. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like you gotta know like if I wasn't self aware, I couldn't tell you where mm-hmm. all the resentment and stuff mm-hmm. come from with you know, but I know it's there, mm-hmm. and I know that when it comes up, I know how to manage it or deal with it, mm-hmm. and I know okay, that's that's a part of you, maybe the seven eight year old part of you that's speaking, to, you know, the part that uh, mom lashed out a little bit, you know what I mean? You cried, hey, stop crying, you know, you you too grown old for that, you know, be a man, you know, challenging your manhood. That's that little boy who's coming up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I know that about myself. Um, if you're going to be in a leadership role, you got to have some level of self-awareness. You know what I mean? So that now you can start the process mm-hmm. of being vulnerable. So do you think that some men don't do it because it was never created for them? Yeah, they don't know They don't know any better. Yeah. It's, it's sad. I'm going to be honest with you. It's sad. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm listening to you talk and I'm like, dang. Like, they don't, they don't understand. Because in business, we've been taught, like, no emotions like you make the best logical decision you mm-hmm. like that's how right you know it's like it's about profits and losses right mm-hmm. but really business is about people mm-hmm. yeah if you're sure. selling a product or if you're right. like mm-hmm. you're servicing some type of customer somebody's somebody's need mm-hmm. and the reality of it is i don't think i don't think many leaders are aware that they have to be human mm-hmm and I, and here's the other side of that too, right? Story time. Mm. Wait, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, go ahead. The butt. Uh, yeah, I gotta find. Yeah, story time. Oh. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's why I feel. You know, I, I believe in you. Man. Go ahead. Let's be being vulnerable. Um, <laughs> so, in all seriousness, though, right? Yeah. Story time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was the manager. Uh-huh. As a branch manager, I was the manager that like had a really great relationship with my team. Right. We had fun all the time. We joked around. We like whatever. Right. Right. I treated them as if they were my family. Right. Right. And I and I do that today, but and I'm a, I'm a little more guarded or whatever now because right. I'm gonna tell you why. 
Um, I had a, I had a I had a person on my team, and I think I told this story before. You've probably heard it. Maybe, maybe you haven't. But so is this really story time? Since you already told the story, <sighs> yeah. have you heard it? Maybe. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, I think I did. Did you hear it? Mm-hmm. What I say? You were talking about your coworkers. What happened? They did something to you that made you less vulnerable. That part. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so like let's re- let's reclaim that space. Go ahead with your story. This one can be vulnerable. Oh, <laughs> dang. <laughs> <Let's just go. laughs> yeah, see what they do. They just, this, this is why. So, this so is a prime go. example. Prime this example. Is camera. This is the camera. What's, so there you go. There this is see, why. This is why. See, we get it somewhere. So, ladies, this is why men don't want to open up because of, I just gave a prime example <laughs> of what right, not to time. do. Uh, nah, man. Go, <laughs> go ahead with the story. <laughs> but long story short, mm-hmm. all right, so I'll make a short story since, uh, mm-hmm. you know, something happened. Uh huh. It didn't happen that way, but this person needed out. All right. And this, you know, so it made me less vulnerable because now, like, I never want to be somebody that can be taken advantage of. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That's it. So you lost trust. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 100%. So that's so I, a lot of that's where a lot of that comes from then. Not trusting. Right. I that's that's I think that's I don't think so. Hmm. I don't think well for me, yes. But I think I'm talking about for men. For I don't think it's I don't think it's trust. I just think it's it's culture. Yeah. It's business culture. Like I don't why are you sitting here telling me about your, what your that your child is sick? Like, what they got to do with you doing your job? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the culture. That's the culture. So how are you gonna fix that as an executive leader? What you mean? Like, I can't fix it, but like, I can be there for you. Yeah. But most people don't like. Again, it's work and mm-hmm. it's work and it's personal. It's two totally different things, mm-hmm. right? So like, but work life integration. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we talked about it. I was about right? to say, I hey, I was about to like, bring it up. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it goes together like, yeah. because you cannot treat somebody like a, you know, because you, and you know, it also plays a role into this as well. What's that? What is the history of America? What, what, what age are we in right now? The what age of America? I don't know. What? Technology. Oh yeah. Technology. Right. Yeah. 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 What were you we before? What? And, um, uh, industrial industrial. Mm-hmm. So it was factories. It was production. It was like, that was the culture of America. Mm-hmm. So nobody cared that you're, son is sick or whatever it is right or you know you had a death in the family okay you take these days off or whatever but you come back and you you gonna work right Right. like like nobody no like that was the culture but now we have a different you know more in touch with you but you know what even even then even then even the man who was going to work didn't care if he was sick didn't care because he again he had to survive you know what I mean? Like I, I don't care how I feel, and I still carry that too, man. Like I don't care. Like I, we got to make it, and I think I think it can be toxic in some ways. You know what I mean? Because you're dismissing the, like you say, the humanity um, in your case and maybe your family's case as well. So, yeah. I hear y'all, but at the end of the day, like women go through that, but we still are able to sit down and talk about what we're going through in the workplace. So that's why I'm like, but y'all what are different? You're though. wired that way. Yeah, y'all wired that. So that's my question. So what is it going to take okay. for you to be wired that way? To not just be wired that way, but also just speak about what's going on, like a safe space to have a conversation like your executive leader when she was giving your performance evaluation, did you take what she said and and just like, okay, I'm going to learn how to do that. Or did you answer the question on why you're not like that? Mm-hmm. I think naturally anybody wants to like fight for like why mm-hmm. this is why I'm that way. This is why I never be that way. Mm-hmm. But it's like, mm-hmm. do you want to get to the next level or not? But, yeah. Right. Yeah, but, like, that, but that was a, a time to, that was a space. She created that space for you to open up. So if you're not knowing um, what you need to do, then how am I going to, as your executive leader, help you maneuver that, put you on a path to that? Right. So then I can be like, you know what? I can send you to this training or this workshop or this conference to 
give you the tools and resources that you need mm -hmm. to put towards your direct reports. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, did you speak about why you're not opening up to your direct reports? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> um, maybe I may have hit on it, but mm -hmm. like it wasn't my focus was on because I we because it's not the first time you you, you know mm -hmm. I think and hopefully nobody's you you know annual, annual review is the first time that you kind of hear that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you're having conversations already, and I think we've had enough conversations around it already mm -hmm. that like okay, this is what you know this is what it looks like mm -hmm. to move forward. Mm -hmm. in it, so. So you looked at it more as a business move, not more so like a yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So how does that work in in the home? Oh, which part? <laughs> that part. Do you look at it like in the home? How do you? What does my wife need? What do my kids need? I'm gonna give you that. Um. But do you talk about your my do your do your wife have that safe space for you to talk about your things that you're going through, like how, how you're feeling for the day? We already established on this podcast three episodes ago that women don't listen. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> See? I'm just playing. I ain't asked you that. <laughs> we do listen. Okay. Uh -huh. But the key to listening is. A lot of people in the black community, I feel like, and I've been, um, <sighs> this is one of my things that I was going through trying to heal. And I, I figured out that I wasn't listening with my ears. I was listening more so with my triggers. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah. Bang. I Explain could, that. What do I mean? Yeah. I know what you mean, but I, I like was, to hear it. It was more so like. Being on edge. Yeah, I just see you with a shotgun so, right now, just like. So it wasn't. Say wrong. It was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't what he said. It was how you received it, mm -hmm. and how you received and how it. How it made me feel in that moment yeah. was triggering. Like. Yeah. And I'm not listening with my ears. Like, oh, this person is really right here for me. They care for me. It's more so. Oh, so we on the opposite team. Yeah. Okay, so that's how we rolling. Mm -hmm. You want to get down like I that? I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's one of the keys. Like that's when you figure that out, and then let your partner know. Like, hey, for the past couple of years or months, I've been listening with my triggers, and this is what's triggering me. That's me Ooh. opening <laughs> up and like, hey, right. Can right. you approach me and deliver this in a different way, in a manner to where um, you're leading with care? Right. And, you know what I mean? And so I talked about that on the last part. I was right. care, meaning compassion, right. accountability, respect, and empathy. Right. So if I give you those tools and resources in the space, why can you still not open up to See, me? See, and that's the thing, I, because that person is still, I'm not speaking for myself, mm -hmm. like I still struggle with mm -hmm. vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And in fact, what I view manhood or masculinity to be, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, because of what I was taught, not, di not mostly directly, probably indirectly as well, is that, yo, you're going to be good, mm -hmm. you know? suppressing how I feel versus expressing. Mm -hmm. That's why we got a journal. You know, that's why I write, mm -hmm. you know, like, because sometimes I would feel a way, but I don't know what I'm feeling because I suppressed what I felt so long mm -hmm. that I don't know how to express that's it. it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then even when it's time to express it, I'm like, bro, I don't want to, it, it's really tough to be, it, you feel it right here. Like, mm -hmm. bro, I don't, I don't want to be vulnerable. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I said what I said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you so is me? it easier for men to talk about it with each other? Because y'all have like the barbershop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you have like the bars where y'all just go be like, this this my dude. Right. We about to like, bro, what's going on with you? More so than having that conversation with your girl, your wife or whoever, that yeah. female figure in your life. Just like as a kid, you said like your mom. You know, like me, I'm a single mother. Right. So with my son, my my son, we have a different um, relationship. Right. Me and my son talk about any and everything up under the sun. But that's like, your baby, though. Uh, what you mean, my? That's, that's your baby. All my kids are my baby. I know. 
But that's your light. That's that's your. I point. have that relationship with my daughters. Right. So but, that those are your babies. Right. Is it may be different for your man? What do you mean? No, I mean I mean I'm saying like with my son. Uh. Uh-huh. When we talk about the single mother household. Right. Like from a very young age, I've. Gave, giving him that space to oh, talk to mom about okay, 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 any and saying. everything, you know, right. no matter what it is, if you have, like, till this day, like, uh, he calls me at times crying because right. his heart is broken. Right. A girl done broke his heart right. or whatever, or he didn't get something that he really worked hard for, so he had right. to try again. Right. So, and and I'm not saying, like, I was that mother that held on to her son, like, all his life because at a certain age, I was like, you know what? You're feeling yourself. Go stay with your dad. Uh-huh. See what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. See what that looks like. Oh, man. But then you see the difference. Yeah. Because now that he's 25, uh-huh. you can see that loving part of him that I gave. And then you can see that other part, like when I stay with my dad, like, oh, I... I got to get my roster up. Yeah. Like, I can't be giving these girls my heart. But then at the same time, it's like, but I had a loving mom. Like, I want to love on her. Like, I yeah. want somebody living yeah. with this. So it yeah. all depends on the household and I feel that. how yeah. the environment space was created. Right. Right. I stayed with my dad a little while, too. It, but it, it staying with him was different because he was, when I stayed with him, he was really straight. Mm-hmm. And, um he he's really spiritual, and, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. So it was my experience was a little different. So I ain't got no balance there. But um, what I noticed, though, you know, prophetically speaking, I think that this time where, you know, you, you see this this rise in like the feminine movement and you know, um, women becoming, um, you know, more, well. Leading and you know more. It's independent. hard for you to say that women leading. No, 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 no. Uh, no. Come on, come man. My, <laughs> it kind of struggle with that part a little like bit. Like women. No. Now let me, let me just put this out there. I was being vulnerable. I don't want no woman to also <laughs> get it. You see what I'm saying? See, I'm Why? giving y'all two examples. Watch. Wow, they gonna be in the comments. Oh, he don't like women. He don't. No, he like. <laughs> he, he, what they call them? Uh, uh, what they call them? Uh, um, uh, uh, sh- sex- chauvinistic. Yeah, chauvinistic. Man, and all. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be all that. But anyway, for being vulnerable, but. I think I think one thing it, it, okay so <laughs> there's cons and pros with this right mm-hmm. so I think the pro is seeing a woman in a leadership may not be a bad thing because now you get to see you know from a man perspective how to lead and still have your emotions intact mm-hmm. and not be so you know robotic and stuff right you know what I mean we get to learn that mm-hmm. but if we're broken and we can't see that, we won't learn that. Mm-hmm. But another thing is if, and what I'm saying too is that a lot of women have taken on the masculinity role. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're becoming more hard mm-hmm. than feminine. And we can't be females. Yeah. yeah. And so I think how I say this, okay, if you want a man to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. soften up, mm-hmm. that's the feminine side of a man. So you have to be feminine to get that. You have to be soft mm-hmm. to get that from him. You know what I mean? But if you want to challenge a man, mm-hmm. you be masculine. Mm-hmm. And then that's where you get the, you know what I mean? The rah-rah and the pushback and all that. Mm-hmm. So I, that, mm-hmm. that's my answer. So my question is this. how, um, What does that look like in the church? In the church? Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason why I ask that is because there was a time when I was growing up, I was, believe it or not, I was mm. going to church almost every Sunday. What? How do you go to church now? I was part of the choir. You, mm. How do you go to church now? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I do BSB sometimes. Hey, real Same. talk. Yeah. BSI. Yeah. Hey, so, shoot. Never mind. Let me not say that. Go ahead. <laughs> so there was a time in my life where I felt safe. Mm-hmm going to church Mm -hmm. every Sunday. And that was because there was like an open door policy with my pastor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I'm here for you. Like I was able to walk up to him after church and have a conversation. Right. Now, these days, when I go to 
a church. Well, not, not, I'm not even going to say go visit <laughs> a church. <laughs> oh, man. You don't have that. Your pastors have bodyguards. Your pastor is like, it's like you got to make appointments. It's like they're celebrities. You know what I mean? Those so, are churches you choose, huh? Well, no. It's it's a million churches. I love one Sandra, of <laughs> Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> right. But I'm just saying, like, that is what kind of, like, changed my route. Like, mm, I don't have that personal. And he's a leader. Yeah, but, like, there's other leaders in the church. So why not talk to those people? But like, who, we look at, sometimes we look at the pastor as, like, the end all, be all, the person to talk to. but. Mm-hmm. I don't look at it as the end all be all, but then if you like you said, you have other people in the church that are leaders, but who are those people? They don't they don't make themselves known. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like right. who do who do you go to? And you don't have that anymore where back then when I was in high school, many, 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 many moons ago. Right. You had many, many. Yeah, it it me. <laughs> Like, you know, see, here we go oh, with this high school. We about to battle with the high school. Oh so, so it's like, go talk to, you know, pastor such and such or dink and such and such. And you knew who they were. Right. But I still, now, I still think that? So I still, I still, it, it, go ahead, bro. Church structure has changed. Mm-hmm. One. I think it, you, you're right. There's a lot of bigger churches out there. A lot more. And let's be real, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's. You know, think you know that when I when I say this person, yeah, every one single one of y'all gonna think about somebody that person that always want to monopolize your time. Mm-hmm. They they always praising the shouting out whatever. No, for mm-hmm. sure, it's just just doing the most, right? Right. And as a pastor, you got let's call it a thousand church members. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like you got to be able to be strategic with your time. Mm-hmm. So, but what, what most churches have, have done now is they have these like either cards or some type of like connect like let's connect with you right mm-hmm. and you and that's the that's the the formula to be able to get connected with you know somebody that's that's um that can you know that can that can shepherd you mm-hmm. you know and then the uh, other part of it too is that okay let's say if you're just visiting the church mm-hmm. that's what altar is for you go to mm-hmm. altar Somebody's some church leadership approach. Somebody's gonna come to you, mm-hmm. and they're gonna say, "Hey, what do you you know? What are you here at altar for, or something like that, right?" Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to connect. Hey, I just need to I just need to talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm struggling with. I just, man, you come to my church, you ain't gotta do all that. Mm. What you mean? My church, you ain't gotta do all that. What you do? Just come through the doors just as come. you are. Well, I'm just saying a bigger <laughs> church. I'm just saying a bigger. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, people, you choosing bigger churches? <laughs> yeah. You go to a small. My because, church. But, I mean, let's be real. Like a lot of, a lot of. I mean, I, I, I choose bigger churches. Like I'm one of those big church people now mm-hmm. because. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I like I like a church. I like a church. Huh? They got a coffee shop in this church. <laughs> See, the churches are too big for me. Where I during that time, like when I first moved here, churches were so big that and so many people that. I decided to go on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. So it's less people mm-hmm. than right. you can see me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because if I go on Sunday, you don't know I'm there. You don't, you know what I'm saying? It's not like right. somebody going to come like, hey, Lenana, we missed you on the Sunday. Da, da, right. da, da, da. It's gonna. It's not going to be any of that. So yeah. that's mm-hmm. where they right. went from Sunday to Wednesday to not going at all because Dang. it's just like, you know what I mean? But... Before I became a minister, I ain't like to be seen. That's why I went to big churches. Mm-hmm. Like I want to sit. I'm one of them too. Yeah, I don't like to be. Like, I want to sit in the back. Yep. I don't want to look at my neighbor. I don't want to shake nobody's hand. Right. <laughs> I Turn don't to high, your neighbor. Say I don't want to high five nobody. I just want to come hear the word and and, and be closest to the nearest exit. To ex- I gotta go as eat. soon as I feel like the preacher's almost done, I'm leaving. Mm. Yeah, that, that was me. <laughs> that was me. Mm-hmm. But I think yeah, it's the church you go to, like my mm-hmm. church. We only got what twenty members, twenty five. That's a nice size. No, nah, direct straight to Pastor Shaw. He, you know what I mean. He he he's available, but we have that decent sized church. Mm-hmm. You know where you can. Where we do have that family type vibe. Mm-hmm. Then you got you know the bigger churches like. So I don't think vulnerability have anything to do with that. I just think it's structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean? Now, since we want to talk about, you know, going to church, I got a scripture here. Wait, hold on. Scripture of the week. So we're talking about vulnerability. We're talking about uh, masculinity, femininity, all of that. Let's make man and I. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, so I'm going to read Genesis 1. Mm. I'm going to start at 26. That's the beginning? Uh, yeah. No, that, that, I, that, I know. Like, yeah. I know, and I'm saying, like, I was just... Wait, <laughs> do I need to get you a Bible? <laughs> no, uh-huh. I have one. I have a, the part, it's like a real cute one. It's like for black women. Oh, okay. Maybe. You listen to Sarah Jakes, I bet. No, I don't know okay. that is. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, Genesis 1 (laughs) it says and God said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth so God created man you hear this Mm -hmm. he created man in his own image right Mm -hmm. in the image of God he created him male and female he created them so he created when when god talks about man he's talking about male and female Mm -hmm. that's that's the complete image of god Mm -hmm. people we use god our father in the most masculine uh fashion Mm -hmm. at times but we we forget that he have feminine feminine you know he's feminine as well I brought I brought that up to say this. I read a book called The Way of uh, Superior Man, and it talks about pretty much the balance of being masculine and feminine. Mm-hmm. And what happened is that our men, we forgot to be in tune with our feminine, like our emotions, how we express ourselves. And we became more, um, I guess, masculine, you know, dismissing the femininity. Is that that's a word, right? What is it for? Is it? that y'all forgot or was it that it wasn't taught it wasn't taught it 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 was forgotten uh, you know even adam said it, this woman you gave me <laughs> he's blamed the woman you feel me always blaming her you know what i mean this woman you gave me but he 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 was supposed to cover her mm-hmm. you feel me mm-hmm. um but that's the thing we have this weird relationship with our emotions you know and it's not as easy to express ourselves as it is for you all like my wife can really she can go to town me too for real me too. and i'm like yo but when it comes to me i'm i'm just quiet that argument is lost because i don't know <laughs> i don't know what is, i'm saying that is that's where um i struggle in my relationship because uh-huh. honestly i can talk for hours about my feelings or whatever and i don't and i don't know if i'm like Thinking that space is created because you're quiet, so I'm thinking you're listening and you're right. probably tuned out. <laughs> but for the most part, it's like I'm learning, and I realized about this um, the other day about myself, is that when I'm expressing myself, mm-hmm. I have to watch how I say it, the approach and delivery, because yeah, it can you have come to. off yeah. as accusatory. Right. Yeah. And I'm not trying to accuse you of what I'm going because I'm responsible for my own feeling. Yeah, you are. But it yeah. is your actions yeah. that affect those. Yeah, that's true. So why is it that are you listening to us? Because y'all say we don't listen. Are y'all really listening yeah. to us in it depends on when, we're you, feel, when we're expressing how, you know, how we feel? It depends on how you come off. Now, if mm-hmm. you tell me you made me feel or you made me or you never or you <laughs> or you i'm i'm tuned out automatically yeah. never always and always that, and is that why y'all always hey. feel like when we express feelings it's oh here go an argument that's what it is mm-hmm. because you're not holding your feelings you're not taking responsibility for how you accountability feel. for sure yeah it's accountability it's how you feel so instead of saying you never spend time with me i should say I love when we spend time together. I would like to see more of that, if possible. That's a yeah, point. or I or or simple, because like, I learned this in therapy, mm-hmm. just tools. Or I really miss you, man. When she Latanya said that to me, I was like, yeah, that that feels good. What that mean? <laughs> like when she say when she said versus uh, saying you never you're never at home when mm-hmm. you never spend time. You say, hey, I really miss you, and I feel you know. Mm-hmm. I feel that not, alone. Alone. yeah yeah so that's what I'm saying even even it, it's it y'all say y'all can express yourselves mm-hmm. but what is vulnerability actually mm-hmm. are you really being vulnerable or are you shifting the blame on your counterpart 
or your your loved one. Are you shifting the blame on why you're triggered? Because the fear of abandonment. Yeah. Fear mm-hmm. of first said I miss you. Mm-hmm. Like I miss you. Like mm-hmm. I'm I'm stressed because I miss you and I I really want to spend time with you. Mm-hmm. But you're not here. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you talking about creating a space for vulnerability? Yo, you get any, you get anything you want from me. Mm. You feel me? But if you come to me like, you ain't never doing this. You always do this. You are. And I'm like, bro, okay. Well, that's where the growth comes in it because yeah. like, just by like, again, being able to communicate, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just by knowing that, oh, I'm going to use that. You know, again, I'm gonna, we sell, right? Like, I'm going to sell you on that right. all, the, all day mm-hmm. long. Yeah. And how do, how do we as women do that? Again, you just have to rephrase, like, you have to understand that it is your feelings and that you're responsible. And, you know, once you come to that conclusion, you just verbalize that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hey, what is the, let me tell you, say this, my therapist, if y'all don't know, I told her she needed to come on the show because I talk about her so much. Mm -hmm. But verbalize that, like, what is it, what is it you're asking for, Mm -hmm. you know, you never, okay, Mike. You never wash dishes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, I do wash dishes, but what is he really trying to say? Yeah, I'm, I'm really overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Can you help me? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that is better than saying you never. So, as leaders of the household, why isn't men modeling that for women to be able to follow your lead? Because y'all the emotion. No, that's not what I asked. Who's it most important to? Huh? Who's yeah. Important to? Oh, I but like my, that. No, no, I, but, like, I, like, just, I like that. I like that. Yeah, go ahead. Who's it most important to? It should be important to it, both of us. Yes, I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. But who it is, should. Who is it most important to? For me to express myself, it's important to me to okay. be able to have that space. But in order for me to give that and not know how to give it, right? then so shouldn't you also model it as well? Your makeup looks beautiful, right? <laughs> Are you for real? Yeah, it looks I great. tried today. It looks great, right? Thank you. <laughs> Did it start that way when you started putting makeup on for the first time? Mm, I see where you're going. It was learning. So you have to be able to try different things and different tactics and different mm-hmm. phrasing Mm-hmm. For it to get to, so that's what I'm saying. Like, if I it goes see, both ways, right? Goes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so that's it yeah. goes both ways. That, it do, it do, because she's not only responsible for doing it. I am too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, but my problem is sometimes I don't know what I'm saying or what I'm wanting. That's why I journal. You know, like I need to know how tone. What are you actually asking for, man? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it kind of goes back to kind of know, and then we kind of. I feel like we got a little, a little straight away, but kind of bringing it all back together, right? Because we're talking about leaders mm-hmm. and vulnerability, and now we're talking about the household, right? So who's responsible? Who resp- whose responsibility is it? Whose primary responsibility is it to create that openness? It's the leader's responsibility. Who's the primary leader in the household? It's the man. Yeah. So, and that's why I always keep like, in my head, right? Like, <laughs> see, so, see, I'm, I'm really setting it up right now. <laughs> like, success. <laughs> just, just, uh... <laughs> Because we, because we, if she'd have waited twenty more seconds, <laughs> we would have got this really dynamic point I was about to make. Go ahead, I, man. Make the point, it, right? That's make, still we here, we here. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Before you lose it, go ahead. So, I will lose. It. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, dang. <laughs> <laughs> no, All okay. right. So, y'all, the, the primary leaders. Yes, the primary leader in the household. So, if we break up. Mm-hmm. And if we get if we get divorced or whatever we if it don't work out, mm-hmm. it's the fault of this. Who's? Who's? It's the man's fault. No, no right. not all the time. <laughs> because it's the man's primary responsibility. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to Hold create on. the openness, the vulnerability, and the relationship. I'm, nah, I'm sorry, because I see. think that's my so, that's my so, viewpoint. So God created man in his own image. The image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. So when you refer to man, who you referring to? Y'all think God get jail polish? He'd probably get jail polish, wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. He would do that. He made it. What you mean? Uh-huh. He created it. He Why wouldn't he? <laughs> he created it. Why wouldn't he? You know, it's, I just I just imagine like 
like we used to take the trip drinking. Nah, but like, I mean, look at look at relaxing look at. and like at a spa, getting like a little you know the stimming inside. Yeah. Anyway, here's who you think created the woman. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Well, I I I have to disagree with you. All right. Because I feel like, and I talked about this before on another podcast, that I'm gonna be the female that doesn't always agree with females because sometimes I'm on the male side I think sometimes when relationships do not work out I feel like women need to start taking accountability for their actions that they play into that Mm -hmm. instead of placing the blame because that's what you're used to because that's what a trigger right yeah you're right you're right that's what I saw growing up it was always him 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 and if I don't get what I need, it's because of him. You're right. not getting what you need because of you. Yeah, I'm tripping. I don't know what I'm talking about. No, no, but <laughs> hold on. The thing I said, you know, she's wait, right. Wait, she's right. Right. wait, wait. That is true, but perception mm-hmm. is gonna yeah. be our fault. Yeah. Perception. It got. It go. It has to be mm-hmm. both. And that's and that's somebody, That's a very mature way of looking at it. Uh, by the way, so like that's not like a typical. Like a relationship, like you were talking like this, whatever this is. That that's two people that's trying to go. You know. Right. That's trying to make it work. That my the person I'm with now, we we're not together. We're we're, you know, starting over like dating each other to re- relearn everything. Right. But we're not together because of who? LaDonna. Why? Because LaDonna wasn't listening. LaDonna was always cutting him off when he was talking. Like he he told me all those things. And so I had to take a step back and look at myself and I'm like, this is this is what I'm doing. Um, but if you felt heard, would you feel the need to continue to lash out? Mm. I felt like I was heard. I just wasn't listening to him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Me, like, I wasn't. Well, let me say this, bro. Do, do, <laughs> do that happen in your marriage? Accountability? What she was saying. Did that happen in your marriage? Oh, yeah. 1,000. And it happened in my marriage. What I'm saying is, Ain't nobody gonna be perfect. Mm-mm. When you commit it, you commit it. Right. I'm just putting it out there. I have tunnel vision. <laughs> okay. But so when I know that I messed up and I had to take a look at myself, I had to fix it. I had to come back and say, you know what? But I ain't gonna be perfect. I'm I know I'm not I know I'm not and gonna, gonna be perfect. slip up a few times. Who, me? Yeah. Of course I slip up all the time. Like I, my mouth is terrible uh, when I'm talking. <laughs> when I don't get my way because I grew up the only child. Right. And if you're coming back at me Right. Instead of <laughs> 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 Because what I'm used to in my household is my dad. I I saw a man sit down, the women in the house, like right. my mom or me talk to me about what is going on and what I can do better. Right, right. If okay. you're not talking to me in that tone, you're going to get the, my mama side of me. Oh, uh, okay. That's so, not good. Okay, okay. <laughs> that guy needs up. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he did the Caribbean smack. <laughs> no, no, no. no, it's not um, good. But you got to just model the what you want. Okay, so let's go back to working environment. Because we uncovered a lot here, and we're going into an hour here. Are we? Yeah, we are. We talk, man. When you come on a pod, yo, you just add an extra hour and 40 minutes to the pod, by the way. Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, that mean I talk too much. <laughs> no, nah, they say women women talk. Way, uh, women talk. What does they say? Women speak a certain amount of words more than men or something like I that. I believe that. Yeah. Look, do the research. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> nah, you, you open us up. You, you open us up. For vulnerability. We'll okay, appreciate it. so yeah. if we're going back to leadership in a workplace, well, let's talk about that leadership when it came to the Falcons. Let's talk about that Falcons leadership. Winning right now, I mean, I know the record, and <laughs> we appreciate you, little Donna, for all your hard work. <laughs> but, uh, like when she got there, they got a new coach. I don't know what she's saying, <laughs> but when she got there, they got a new coach. They got new quarterbacks. They, yeah. I don't know what she said to the folks, man. But we we'll appreciate you, though. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> What'd you say, bro? Hey, they say, uh, uh, I don't know, it's totally off subject. Did Arthur Blank, Arthur Blank really induct himself into the Hall of his, his Ring of Fame or whatever? Or was that like a staff member is like, hey, let's do this for Arthur? Well, the Ring of Honors, I found out was, I thought it was just a, a Falcon thing. But I found out during my research, it's an NFL thing. Oh, so you can induct whoever you it's like all on your votes and what you contribute oh. and everything else. The majority of people that are in the ring of honor are like 
everybody that made like a big contribution to the uh, Falcons, not monetary but right. just in general like we just put Matt Ryan right that's all that um one game I think it was the Saints game where they showed all the people like uh Deion Sanders all of them uh-huh. the one thing I was upset about and it was just me is because it was Mike Vick wasn't they didn't do Vick that's crazy bro you ain't no uh-huh. you ain't the only one mad I was, see, uh, see, and I think see. it may come later but I just think that a lot of people do a lot of things in the NFL, yeah. but I think that he's very deserving. Nah, of he is. What he that's uh, he got uh, in trouble at a at a spot where in history where it's just it's almost like the uh, Diddy the council culture. Oh yeah, you know like Diddy. Diddy. Huh? And I said Diddy. <laughs> you no, didn't hear nothing about Diddy. No. <laughs> Go ahead. But it's like he did something bad mm-hmm. that he shouldn't have done. Mm-hmm. People, I ain't gonna say they overreacted. They reacted. Mm-hmm. He served his time. Mm-hmm. He did it. He served his whatever. Mm. Keep moving. I think we. I, this is gonna be a whole different another conversation because I'm looking at Brett, what he did. <laughs> yeah. And mm. wasn't nothing taken away from him. Mm. Period. Mm-hmm. Talking about leadership and vulnerability. Can't be. Mm. And, and, and he tried to be that on mm. in front of mm. the. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Oh, I feel sorry for me yeah. because I have this Marcus thing. And, right. Nah, but dude. that had nothing to do with you stealing right. money. Right. Why would you bring that up right then? Wow. And he did. He took money from what community? Mm-hmm. 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 That's but we ain't going to talk about but that. He, but he, you know, that's the double standard. But that's America. That's mm-hmm. that's, 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 that's my point. Mm-hmm. That's exactly my so point. So why we can't be vulnerable in corporate America because of that? Because he full don't kill. Because <laughs> they don't really care. that goes to what I was reading, like mm-hmm. black men, black women don't trust corporations to be able to talk because they feel like their concerns are not going to be heard. But you want to know something, though, even with this conversation, what I'm what I'm gathering is that once we learn to be there for one another, mm-hmm. black men and black women, mm-hmm. bro, that's another yeah. conversation, bro. Immaculate. You Why is that? But I'm saying if we can. I feel like that's like, like I ain't going to say not necessarily just black people, but that's my journey is like, I want everybody to be, to get, like to get what they, they deserve. Look at that leader. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I feel like, I, I mean, feel like everybody should be able to. Yeah. Yeah. What's that mean? What that mean? Hold on. We'll say yeah. His people might be watching, so we. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that is the thing to say, like Obama. Like that's what you got to say. I want everybody to to achieve. I want everybody. That's why I'm here. Exactly. You selling that to us? I'm you selling. You want it. us to believe you, that? You believed it? Uh, no, I didn't. It's true though. It's no. true. It's true. No. I'm, just, no, I'm just kidding. But you have to say that, right? It's true. Because look at, what, that. look at where look at my, your position. Ninety percent of my. Ninety percent of my team is black, mm. so I don't have to say that. I can say I can like it's. it's but nah, we I know, man. That, that's that's surely who he is. Like, yeah. I, even on this pod, yeah, man. If can, you're the third, you gotta be. Yeah, I, <laughs> I come with that leadership, <laughs> for real. And don't forget the three. Don't forget the three. So so leadership and so what we're learning is that to create um, opportunity for vulnerability. First, mm-hmm. as a leader, you have to be vulnerable mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. Which starts with some type of self awareness, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say number two would be what? How you communicate your vulnerability? Mm-hmm. Yep. Communicate effectively. Uh, communicate effectively. Mm-hmm. And listening. And listening, right? With your ears and not your triggers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, That's a bar right there. Oh, yeah. Not your, oh, say that again. Mm-mm. So, well, okay. You should have been listening. <laughs> See, there you go. I, no, I wanted to hit the bar. We'll just do that then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's, you know, it's you know, most you know, people. No, guys, you know what you should do? What was that? You should listen with your ears and not your triggers. Bars. That's mm. how you still it. Yeah, he said it. Okay. Mm. Still it. Yeah. <laughs> it's his I say, See, he prepared me for it. So He prepared you? So number three is what? Uh, Why is that? See, that's that's what I'm talking about. There we go. Y'all prepare <laughs> each other for everything, but you won't, <laughs> won't prepare for the female. Okay. 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 So number, like, number three is, um, what we got for number three? Since we coming up with a 
What was number one? <laughs> I say you gotta, as a leader, you have to be vulnerable yourself. Yeah. And it starts with some type of self awareness. Mm -hmm. And number two is communicate. Oh, communicate. Mm -hmm. How to communicate your vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And like LaDonna said, communication goes both ways. Not only talking, but listening and hearing the person, not through your trauma, right? Mm -hmm. And number three will be what? Somebody got it. I don't know. I think, um, I think for me, is to not just not perceive everything when you're coming to your mate or whoever mm -hmm. that there's going to be a lack of support a going lack there, of... going there with like being positive. Right. Uh, what they call it? Uh, not ill intentions. Uh, what is it called? Like not lack of support. But uh, lack of support. <laughs> so, so you saying having thoughts? Like your thoughts? Where your thoughts kind of like? You 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 almost kind of talk yourself out of mm -hmm. supporting it, or you kind of mm -hmm. talk kind of like I preconceived notions. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how you feel like the conversation yeah. gonna go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I already have it made up in your mind. Like yeah. if right. I say this, he's gonna say this. So you yeah. are already uh, on guard. Right. Let your guards down. So number three is let your guards down. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I say number four would be, um, I thought about something when I looked at you. <laughs> this is something you said. I lost it, but um. Anyway, yeah. So number one, uh, you have to be uh, self-aware. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, vulnerability start with yourself. Number two, you have to learn how to, to learn how to communicate effectively. Effectively, mm -hmm. not just talking, but listening, mm -hmm. right? And not with your triggers. And not with your triggers. Bars. Number three is um, having your guards down. Mm -hmm. when, you know, when you come. And talk to whoever in corporate or whatever. Mm -hmm. And number four would be, oh, here we go. There we go. We're all on the same team. Yes. We're all on the same team. Yes. We're all on the same team. Mm -hmm. Same goals. Mm -hmm. Yep. How y'all feel about that? Partnership. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Well, y'all be sure to get that, uh, what am I doing right, journal? And for the single ladies, if you do that, then that's the way, like, how sports go. If uh, you work as a team, then you go ahead and you get in that ring, right? Yeah. Get that ring. Yeah. Get that that's ring. What, that's, what we, well, that's what, what we shoot. No. Uh oh. Well, hey. <laughs> that, that quick, too, bro. <laughs> well, go uh, <laughs> Make sure y'all get that. What am I doing <laughs> right? <laughs> I want to be like Drake. What? I'm going to wear the pinky ring until I get that wedding ring. Oh, man. Oh, he just in. Oh, like uh, what's the name? And nonstop. Mm. Huh? Pick your ring till I get away. You say, you know, say a lyric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a lyric though. Um, what you got, man? Lyric of the week. Wait, 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 wait. for it. Let's talk about it. That was the wrong Ooh. one. Nah, I like that one. Nah, Let's that talk about one. it. But hold on. <laughs> That's what you should have played with Obama said. He said, "Let's talk about it." <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Lyric of the week comes from Don Trip, and he says. Excuses won't help, and complaining won't solve it. So the studio then became my office. Mm. And that's where the women cry. That's where you got to talk. You got to be able to talk through things. You got to communicate things, because at the end of the day, mm. nobody cares about your complaining. Nobody cares about your excuses. Mm. What are you going to do to be able to get that out, to be able to get, to be more vulnerable, mm -hmm. and get the success that you need to get? And what are excuses? Isn't that the opposite of being vulnerable? <laughs> so was it, how, was what are excuses? Excuses are the tool of the incompetent. There we go. That is longer though. Uh, well, we just want that short. Part. All right, <laughs> all right, man. Make sure y'all. I'm going back. Make sure y'all get that. <laughs> what am I doing right, journal? Where is the journal? You got the. What journal. am I doing right? Yeah. Oh, I said this is bad. What am I doing right? Yeah. What am I doing right? What am I doing? W R I T E. It's a whole list journal. Get mm. that from Amazon ASAP. Also, like, share, subscribe. We like having LaDonna on, man. Yeah. We like having really? LaDonna on. She, yeah, she having LaDonna on. Yeah, man. <laughs> L, L Boogie, man. You know what I mean? We like having That's LaDonna right. on. Uh, right. Like, share, subscribe. Oh, here's the journal there. There, oh, you there go. it is. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's real nice. It's better than this handy dandy notebook. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> I don't want to mess up my journal. Uh, please don't. Don't, don't write don't in that. My, Just like, do not write it. in this, please. <laughs> 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 Just take a picture, print it, and then paste right. it in there. Well, <laughs> we 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 are oh, out of here. Can you read this? No. We are out of here. Stick and move, we can get it done. Call it unity, it ain't no way around it. Motivation from the big guy, we don't play about him. Going hard for the gang show.